What's up and good morning, Flomies. This is your boy, Mr. Ray, for another edition of... Where is... Today we are going to be doing a flotorial on the elusive tandem sneak or as what Tim Moves of Way of the Rope calls it Hanuman's Dance or as what Slush of Slush Ropes calls Super Sneak. Alright, different names, same movement but also different ways of expressing the movement. Alright, so let's get this going. So before doing tandem sneak, watch if you have or assess yourself first if you already have command with your dragon roll both clockwise or right to left or north to south or whatever way you want to call it and counterclockwise okay both directions right to left left to right clockwise counterclockwise north to south south to north Whatever. And apart from that, you want to make sure that you also have a command over your overhand sneaks, two point, for, well, both sides, and underhand sneak, two point, both sides. All right, so, if you've already noticed, Tandem Seek is a combination of the three. Overhand, Dragon Roll, and Underhand. So even if I shift, Underhand, Dragon Roll, and Overhand. Right? So, yeah, Mr. Ray, I think it's not. Actually, it's not. It's actually just a combination of overhand and underhand and overhand and underhand and underhand and overhand and overhand and underhand. So where does the dragon roll come in? Well, the dragon roll basically comes in. The orientation of the body towards the rope, rather, is in a front and back propeller orientation. In flow arts, we call this the wall plane and the wheel plane. So the planes vary where your body is facing. And essentially, you don't necessarily always want to break the plane. So if I'm in a wall plane, I can't just whoop, whoop, multiply and put it at the side and make it suddenly into a wheel, wheel plane. I mean, I can eventually when I have a bit more control over the ropes, why not? But for now, let's respect the planes or as what um, other people would call the cardinal rules. So again, just a review of your cardinal rules. When you are inside propeller, turn to get into your front and back propeller or into a wall plane, front and back propeller and turn again to get into another side propeller all right so again orientation of the body is the one that changes now here's something cool mr. William Della flows apart from making a rope flow hit workout he has this wonderful way of breaking cardinals where he just goes straight from a dragon roll into a matador and then back into a dragon roll. And he does it so smoothly like as if there was no such thing as cardinal rules or planar awareness. Which is really awesome. I love it because rule breakers always make the best explorationers. Explorers rather. Alright, wheel plane when the implement is moving at the sides of the body and wall plane when the implement 
is moving in front and behind the body, all right? So again, the plane only changes based on how the body's orientation changes. Okay, good. So here we go. Before we actually start using the ropes, let's do some warm-ups. Because you have to remember that tandem sneak is a lot, apart from just wrist movement, is actually a lot of shoulder and hip movement. Okay? So you will notice that tandem sneak is a mix of both overhand and underhand movements. So you need to have, again, a command over overhand, drag and roll, and underhand. All right? So with our warm-up, this is what we're going to do. If you can come into your core fist, that would be great. Okay. So we're going to use the pinky side, or rather, the pinky connected to the elbow. And this is what's going to happen. So the elbow is actually what's creating the figure eight motion. And then the hand or the pinky is trailing the elbow. All right? Because in your tandem sneak, this is what it's going to look like. Okay? So now you're constantly in a somewhat supinated, or your hands or your palms are constantly facing up. Notice that the elbow is the one moving in that figure eight motion at the side. And my rope is going forward and back. So even if I repeat it on the, the other hand, oh, on the other hand, it's the opposite. Now it's my pinky leading the way. All right? Okay, so we'll do it first with the elbow. Again, if you got your core fist going, Keep your knees nice and soft and your ankles nice and loose. Hips also nice and loose and shoulders. By the way, shout out to Flow CDO and to Benig and the rest of the Flow CDO crew for, you know, sharing with me this wonderful, awesome, ooh, feels good shirt that's perfect for flowing. So core fist, let's lead with the elbow. Hand at the side, bend the elbow. Now, push the elbow out. You'll feel your shoulder moving. Let it move. Push the elbow out. You'll notice your pinky following. And then you can also move the hip. And then pull the elbow back. Now, you want the hand to sneak in. All right? As the elbow pulls back, you're gonna push the elbow forward again. And then the hand will just naturally follow. All right? So again, you want to try to keep the hand in a supinated position where the palm is facing up. So if we're going to do it from here, here, exaggerating the movement. When it goes forward or in front of you, it's the palm or the backhand rather that sweeps. When it's going to the back, it's the palm or the heel of the palm that sweeps. Or rather, maybe this part, the outside, so you're in that sneaking motion. And one thing that you have to remember is that the elbow is constantly facing outward. The moment that it faces inward, oop, you are in a dragon roll. So keep that feeling of the elbow pointing out so here it's pointing in front of me but it's still out it's still pointing out it's still pointing out even if it's at the back and I'll show you from behind That's, at least for me, my right elbow. And it's, or my right side, and it's the right elbow leading the motion. Right, so you wanna always remember that you're making a figure eight. And yes, the feeling is awkward, but again, it's a lot of shoulder work. 
So try to get your shoulder moving as well. Now for the other hand, my left hand, like I said, my pinky is going to be leading the way. Right? Now still the same. I want the elbow to be facing out. So you can imagine that your right hand is doing underhand sneak and left hand will be doing overhand sneak. All right, so pinky goes down, doesn't necessarily lead, and it just shifts. So you can try this first. Elbow is still pointing out, pinky is leading the motion, and you'll feel this. Just do your best with however this way feels. I'll show you from the back. And if you bring it both together at the same time, you will feel opposite movements happening in your shoulders. So you want to get that nice and synchronized. Take it slow. All right, and start out. But remember, what's important is that your hands are not just going in a horizontal flat manner they're actually spiraling they're going up and down up and down up and down so that requires the hips and the body to create a nice synchronistic effect and only you can feel that for yourself all right so showing it to you from behind Right? Getting the ropes will make more sense. Whew, what a shoulder feel. Come into a matador's wheel. And from here, if your feet are parallel to each other, take a step back already. Now you want the sneak to happen on the side of your front foot. So in this case, it's my right foot. So I'm gonna do a two point sneak on my right. One, two, there we go. One. Two, one, two, one, two. All right, so maybe do five here. After you do five here, let your body turn first. And still doing the sneak. And come into a dragon roll. So you will notice how your hand changes its position the moment you get into dragon roll. Don't think about it too much, just feel the movement okay after you do five dragon rolls here look to your underhand because obviously underhand is the polar opposite of overhand right look into your underhand turn your body into underhand and then slowly start to do a two-point underhand sneak go slow Notice you can even look at your hand, how it's moving. Notice how the body or the sneaking hand feels when you're doing the movement. Five here again, All right? And then come back into dragon roll. And whatever you do, don't stop hunching, don't stop pulsing. Don't stop observing how the body moves, All right? Or how your body moves. Notice your hands, the difference of placements and motion and wrist motion. And again, turn to, after five here, turn to overhand. And then instead of five, do three. One, two, three. Come back to dragon roll. Then do three again. One, two, three. Now look into underhand and do another three. One, two, 
and three, and then come back into dragon rope. Then you guessed it. Try going down to two. Look into overhand. One, two, dragon roll. One, two, underhand. One, two, and dragon roll. And then we try to do one. Overhand, dragon roll, underhand. Dragon roll, overhand, dragon roll, underhand, dragon roll. Okay, we're gonna stop there, repeat it for another maybe three sets. And while we're doing that, or while we're resting, while we're taking a break, I want you to notice three things. Weight shift, wrist movement, planar awareness. Planar awareness can already be so easily pointed out based on where you're looking. Okay? So if I'm looking here, and you gotta establish this. If I'm looking here and my body follows, therefore I am in a wheel plane where the wheel, or rather where the implement is moving at the sides of my body. The moment I look to either of the sides and my body follows and the rope or the implement is moving for in front or behind me then I am at a wall plane and again if I look to the sides and I, my body shifts and the movement now is happening at the sides then I am back in a wall, wheel plane okay so that's for planar awareness Drishti in yoga, as we call our focal point. It's being aware of where you're going. Second is weight shift. Notice that in overhand, the weight shift is on the front, or is in my, or is in the front foot. Front, back, front, back, front, back. And every time I am doing my overhand, I want to keep the weight on my front foot. Yeah, feel that weight shift still, but the bulk of the weight stays here, all right? So for this, you can actually lift the heel and just keep that weight there. And we'll use this as a reminder, all right? And then when we get into dragon roll, the weight shift starts to become more even. Right to left, left and right. So every time the rope goes to one part, my body is following that. All right. Now when I go into underhand, I'm going to put the weight now on my left. And I'm going to lift the right foot and use the right foot weight to propel me, no pun, forward. All right. And again, this will help us when we are slowly removing dragon roll. Okay, so here's another drill. Do five overhand, again, five dragon roll and five underhand. One, and then making sure that there is that weight shift there. And of course, wrist movement. I've already explained that a while ago. Just make sure you know when you're doing a sneak and make sure when you know when you're doing a dragon roll. And it's all in how your wrists move. And also, the placement of where your elbow is going. So anyway, here we go. Five overhand, five dragon roll, five underhand. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, and five, and five again. Four, five. Now, from here, do another five of your overhand, and do another, and then this time, do three of your dragon roll, and then five of your underhand, all right? Now, keep doing that until you get from three dragon rolls, to two dragon rolls, to one dragon roll. Emphasis on the weight Shift. All right. One, two, 
three, four, five, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. Bend down to two. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, and then down to one. One, two, three, four, five, one, one, two, three, four, five, until such time that you don't need to do drag and roll anymore. You can keep repeating that one. Four, five, one, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, one, until such time you just figure out that, whoa, five, one, five, one, five, one, and then you find yourself here. Now, we'll get to that in a few. So, once you've gotten that, once you've gotten Dragon Roll into one, start doing five, one, five, five overhand, one Dragon Roll, five underhand. Now, start to lessen your sneaks. Three overhand, one Dragon Roll, three underhand. Two underhand, overhand, one Dragon Roll, two underhand. One, one, one. This is what it's gonna look like. One, two, one, one, two, one, one, two, one, one, two, one, until such time that there's no more, or until it's one, 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 one. And then just eliminate the dragon roll. Once you've gotten that nice smooth transition going, you can start to slowly eliminate your dragon roll, all right? Eliminating the dragon roll is basically where you start to notice that you don't need to pass through dragon roll anymore to get from your overhand to underhand sneak. And this is where your weight shift will play such a big role, all right? So again, you can start out in dragon roll, look into your overhand, weight on the overhand, one, weight on the underhand, two, weight on the overhand, weight on the underhand, weight on the overhand, weight on the underhand, weight on the overhand until such time that you can just look forward and feel that weight shift. Okay? Now, doing it from the back. Overhand, underhand, overhand, underhand. All right, there we go. So again, many variations, many expressions. You will notice that when I do it, or when any other people might do it, they bring their elbows really, or their hands really close to the sides, really making the most out of that shoulder rotation. And with um, Tim, or the way of the rope, how he usually teaches it, is it's wide. It's mostly on the wrist. Now, this also gives a nice shoulder rotation. 
into the work, I like going deep. Really feeling out what more I can move to get into the movement. Because there's a certain chest opening and or when you keep it close, you start to move closer or move other parts of your body, like your chest and your shoulder blades. Now this starts to create more movement and you also start to add more movement of your core and more movement of the hips. The further you go, the outer or the more extremities you will use, so arms. Notice, and you can also do it as a, as a combination. Bar, or extensions, and body tracers, right? Extensions, so body tracers, and extensions. Right? So again, many ways, different effects, different names, same movement. All right, so good luck, have fun. That was the Tandem Seek. And again, thank you to Flow CDO for this wonderful shirt. And more than that, thank you to Flow CDO for continuously growing the rope and the flow community in Cagayan de Oro. And of course, a special shout out to the Northeast Flomies for continuously growing the Northeast of Manila's um, flow community, rope community. Shout out as well to the Nuvali community with, with, eh, with Tina spearheading the whole movement. Shout out. And then shout out of course to the Butu and ladies who are like whoo, massively powerful and strong. Andrel, K, Rox, um, Super Mama Chris. You guys rock and of course shout out to the Kezon Flow community with Mamshi Flow and whew, and Sands heading the movement strong and then who else? Of course, how can I forget? Rope Flow Ilo Ilo with Mr. Thaw Wigan keeping it strong, collecting ropes, collecting movements, creating a storm down at the southern the south of the Philippines, well, middle of the Philippines rather, you know, really amazing people, really awesome communities growing. And of course, whoa, whoa, how can I forget? Shout out to the Cuenca community here in Montenlupa, headed by Fai, coaches Fai and Ange, and of course the awesome Mr. Junoy Manalo and Mr. William De La Flos for keeping that community nice and solid continuously since day one. And of course, a special shout out to the Rolling Ropes community or to the Rolling Ropes group, um, Brother Corlu, to Angst, to Teacher Tricky, to Mr. Clint, Mr. Zitro Clint, um, and I, 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 I'm, I'm missing someone, uh, and Pee Wee, sorry, and Pee Wee, thank you guys for always constantly reminding us of how important the basics and fundamentals are. Alright, so, ah, and how can I forget? Thank you to all the other rope suppliers out there. Apart from Rope Flow Philippines, you can get ropes from Rope Flow Project and also Winding Ropes. All right, Rope Flow Project has really uh, has wonderful ropes at very very affordable prices, and um, Winding Ropes has uh, ropes at uh, international prices, but they are of top tier quality as well. And of course, Rope Flow Philippines is right there in the middle for you keeping it out of balance okay so and again happy first year anniversary to rope flow philippines and please remember to live in the movement know your ropes and be the flow all right see you in the next tutorials stay tuned for this saturday's ig live tutorials we're going to be having the kazon sisters community group and it's going to be awesome. Okay, see you guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.